Okay, so now we have this conduction cycle, which really just describes voltage changes in the heart. We got Eintogen's triangle, which describes the leads that will pick up those voltage changes. The next thing is how do those leads pick up those voltage changes? And there's some basic rules. Rules of the leads, let's just call it that. One leads some voltages. What I mean is, and I'm going to stay with my pencil, is technically this voltage is going in multiple directions across the heart. But the EKG doesn't pick up multiple directions, it picks up one sum. It sees one arrow. I'm making this a little bit smaller, but it picks up one arrow. And that one arrow represents depolarization of atrium. Similar, similarly, it sums repolarization into one arrow. It sums septal depolarization into one arrow. Let's put it up here. It's going to be a small arrow because really you're only depolarizing the septa, the septum, which is not very big. And it's going to be dominated by this voltage spreading across the papillary muscles that are going to hold the tricuspid valve closed during contraction. So it's a very small arrow. Let's face it in that direction. Next up is apical. An apical will be summed as a large arrow. It's going to be pointed towards the apex because even though some current is going in this direction on the right, most of it's going on the left. So our overall sum is going to look like this. Late left is going to look a little bit confusing. And I'm just going to fill this in like this. We're going to go up the left. I'm actually going to turn the corner a little bit. Repolarization again does not occur until after depolarization is complete. So it's going to be a rather long path and it's going to be rather circuitous. All right, so that's lead sum voltages. Rule two. is leads only pick up voltage changes parallel to the lead. It's a little bit more specific. Leads only pick up that part of the voltage change that is parallel. It's kind of like if I asked you to tell me how long this pen is, as long as the pen is parallel to the plane of your eyes, you can tell that this pen is about four and a half inches long. But if I turn it this way and I ask you to tell me how long this pen is, you can't tell. It's kind of the same thing with the lead. If we're at lead three and we're looking at this voltage change, this voltage change is heading in this direction, it would be as if we were trying to figure out how long this pen is by looking at it this direction. If it's a little bit offset, then you're forced to say this pen is about two inches long, or if I change it all the way, you say the pen is about four inches. So basically the lead will only pick up that part of the voltage change that runs parallel to it. So if you only can see a little bit parallel, then you'll see then the EKG will sense a very small change in voltage. If it's running very parallel, it'll recognize a large voltage change. If it's completely perpendicular, it won't recognize the voltage change hardly at all. The third thing is, as I added these arrows, and these arrows actually represent a plus sign, so there's a polarity to these voltage changes. And what it means is if a voltage change is in the same 
direction of the lead. It will cause the trace to go up. It'll go up on EKG paper, so we would go up. If the voltage change is in the opposite direction, the lead, it will go down on the trace. That's how you get upward deflections and downward deflections. So if the voltage change is with the lead, for example, this depolarization is pointed in the same direction as this lead, so this would go up on the EKG trace. This arrow is pointing in the opposite direction of our lead, so this would cause the trace to go down on our EKG paper or screen. Kind of a simple way to show that might be just to draw some hearts. And if, let's say that we're looking from lead two, so looking from this angle, lead two, if the current was going in this direction, it would cause a huge upward deflection on the EKG. If it was in this direction, well, it wouldn't be quite as parallel, and so it would still cause an upward, but not as large. If the voltage change was perpendicular to this lead, it would cause what's called an isoelectric change. Now my voltage change is going in the opposite direction of my lead, so this would cause it to go down. And if the voltage change was directly opposite of our lead, it would cause a large negative deflection.